Hello, my name is Dante Rene, and welcome to the 10 Room Bizarro YouTube page where I talk about films that I believe need to be talked about more. Like tonight's film, 1978's Hot Lunch. This is 1978's Hot Lunch, really iconic poster art. Actually, if you get the uh, volumes, I forget which volume it's in, but just get both volumes anyway of the Graphic Thrills books, you will find this poster image in there and a nice piece, nice little summary of information about this film and the cultural relevance of this film in our modern times even. Very, very interesting. Or of at least of the poster art is what I mean, of the poster art. So this is part of the Picarama double feature um, from Vinegar Syndrome uh, with Baby Rosemary, which I've already reviewed in this YouTube page. And you can see some images on the back here. I will try my best. There you go. Kind of darker images there. And this is directed uh, This is directed by John Hayes, who also directed um, Baby Rosemary. Now, the interesting thing about the special features for uh, Hot Lunch is that it has also um, some alternate softer scenes. So it's as if uh, Hot Lunch was also uh, released in maybe in some markets as a, uh, a softer film, uh, you know, as, as opposed to um, the, the real cut, the, the, the full cut, which is a hardcore cut. It says the main course is finger licking great. And there's that poster art again, which is really something. You can uh, Google image it and, and see a bigger uh, copy of it or check my Facebook page when I post up the review. So let's get into this film here, 1978's Hot Lunch. We're going to get into this film right here. You know, I'm really, really uh, starting to love John Hayes. Uh, I saw Baby Rosemary, and then, uh, you know, I see Hot Lunch, and I'm like, wow, this guy's freaking awesome. Um, you know, already I'm really digging this guy. So uh, let's get into this. Essentially, what we have here is, is uh, you know, we have a guy who's uh, newly married, and uh, he's, he's not doing too well um, with just uh, life, you know, and, and, and money and not having funds and not knowing what, where the next job is going to take him. So he, um, you know, is, he has his heart in the right spot. I mean, you feel kind of bad for the guy from the get-go and he's working, washing dishes at this, you know, real cruddy, slimy, dirty looking uh, place uh, that has a lit up sign on the outside that says hot lunch. Um, and this is where the movie begins. You get some beautiful shots, by the way, of, um, of, you know, kind of the adult theaters down the street and restaurants and people are kind of looking at the camera and things like that. And, uh, you just get this really great world. Uh, this is San Francisco. Uh, I, I, so, um, uh, because there's a restaurant at the end of the movie called, uh, Kenny's. Um, and actually, yeah, it's called, uh... Something Kenny's, I believe. You'll see it. It's like the last frame of the movie, and I Googled it, and it seems to still be around. Um, so this is wild. Uh, anyway, I've been Googling San Francisco locations from these X-rated films, and they're still around, which is so cool. But um, And so you follow this guy's journey um, into heartbreak, essentially, and into um, trying to make a living. And trying to survive. And you are following this guy through his life. Um, just at least in the, you know, in the weeks ahead. In the weeks ahead. And uh, this is Hot Lunch. As he encounters uh, people along the way. And possibly a new career. And uh, definitely a new future relationally. And his own uh, different uh, view of sex and his body. So let's get into this film. This is once again Hot Lunch from 1978. Here it is. Oh, yes. All right, let's do it. First and foremost, we're going to look at the music for the film. It says in the closing credits the music was done by a guy named Paul Vargas. Now, if you go on YouTube, you can, uh, you know, uh, you can type in Hot Lunch soundtrack. You can get a couple pieces of the soundtrack. You can burn them. Um, the, the music in this film... Um, it reminded me at times of another film that I'm going to be looking at very soon called Sensual Encounters of Every Kind. It reminded me at times of the soundtrack for that. So I had to like look it up real quick. I was like, did he do the soundtrack for that? Um, I, I uh, Not conclusive. I have it on vinyl from Vinegar Syndrome. I bought that about a year ago. And I, I'm going to need to check that again uh, just to, to, to see that. But, uh, you know, definitely do your own research. Because there's a piece of music, I believe at that place, Kenny's, at the end of the film. 
um, that sounds like it's either from Sensual Encounters of Every Kind or Sex World. It's from either one of those two soundtracks uh, that were released on vinyl from Vinegar Syndrome. So uh, you know how I am with music. I'm, I'm, I'm pretty focused on it. So um, there's a piece of music that I've heard before, and I think it's from one of those two films. But anyway, the music in this film... Um, we do have a piece of country uh, just uh, blaring out of a diner radio, which almost reminded me of, uh, you know, kind of the barbecue, uh, the barbecue gasoline station in the original Texas Chainsaw Massacre where Grandpa's beating the girl in the head with a broom. Um, but predominantly we have uh, kind of this jazz underbelly of um, kind of... I don't want to say smooth jazz, not modern smooth jazz, but it's 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 a uh, lighter jazz uh, a little bit jovial, you can almost walk down the sidewalk, you just got a new job, you're having a great day, you know, kind of has that type of vibe, uh, so a, a strong jazz underbelly, but the interesting thing also is that we have pieces of it that almost verge on psychedelic to me, um, where we're evoking a bit more of a strong atmosphere, at certain times, uh, in the, in this film. So lots of music, I thought, but then also, uh, times of just complete silence, uh, during some sex scenes, which I thought was very interesting. Um, and so we, we do have a, a nice jazz core to the music, uh, in this hardcore film. Um, Again, uh, as I looked at Baby Rosemary on this page, um, here's another example of a film uh, that uh, really shows you what an X-rated film can be. And uh, uh, yeah, you know, you need the great sex scenes and um, and the bodies and, and everything, but you're also getting a really strong story and some very interesting darkness uh, spattered throughout of uh, in an exploitation type of way, uh, definitely. Um, you know, typically in a film like this, you would, you might have the lead be the woman. Um, but in this film, we have the lead being a guy, um, who is a, a vulnerable guy and, uh, kind of down and out and, uh, meek, humble. He's not, uh, you know, kind of like a John Holmes, you know, uh, and when he, when John Holmes is focused in a movie, you know, kind of as a, as the main character. Um, we also have a bit of narration in this film, uh, which was, which is interesting. It's interesting what character, I think it's only one character. Uh, might be two characters actually. Might be multiple characters. I'm not. I'm not remembering right now. But it's interesting which characters we're listening to their inner monologue from. I found that to be very interesting. How just you would think it would just be the main guy, and as I'm trying to think right now, um, you know, it's 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 a variety of characters in the film, which is very interesting. And and I'm blanking right now whether it was he, he was included in the mix. Um, I believe he was, but. So very interesting how we have some inner monologue here from a variety of interesting of, of different characters, uh, other than the lead. Now, style, cinematography wise, uh, we're really getting and even locations. You know, the the it's interesting. I always say it's interesting. I got to stop saying that. So, uh, there is a unique element to this film that they would title the film "Hot Lunch" when that's only the first spot of the film, the first location of the film. But in a way, that is the core of the film, that location, because that kick starts the rest of his life or the rebirth of his life. And, and you know, so what's really great is that you get to see the menu outside hot lunch and in the locations of all the, you know, people, you know, adult movie theaters and, and just the, 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 the grindhouse seediness. It almost reminded me of New York city, uh, 42nd street photos and things like that. Um, Fantastic shots involving uh, fog, strobe light, and lighting on this room with uh, musical instruments and um, and a girl kind of blowing both guys and having sex with these two guys um, and ejaculation. Um, really wild style in that particular scene. Uh, you know, as I've said a million times, you got to watch these X-rated films on a large screen. Um, and if you turn all the lights off in this particular scene, the room's strobing. Uh, the fog seems to be coming off the screen and filling up your room that you're watching the movie in. Uh, so really, really interesting. Uh, just ugh, great, great atmosphere. Um, and there's a lot of locations in here and a lot of interesting areas, you know, kind of like um, Encyclopedia Warehouse. <laughs> um, 
a ratty couch in the back of the warehouse. You know, I mentioned Kenny's uh, different homes, and these homes are like unbelievable. There's this one home with like red carpeting and these stairs and this amazing view around uh, the house. Uh, there's even a, a place that the law that this lawyer lives in as well. Uh, just just crazy, crazy stuff. Now, I don't give away stuff, but as this guy is going through the film, you know, he's having different sexual encounters, but those sexual encounters are redefining his future. And actually, his wife redefines his future. Now, a theme of what it is to be a man, the women are hot for him because of how manly he is, not macho. The definition of manliness would be vulnerable. Vulnerable. And a great, like, you know, a great lover. Now, another interesting theme that pops up in this film is prostitution. But not just prostitution of the body, but also prostitution of the mind. Um, and that is something that I thought was really interesting uh, in light of it being a sex film and kind of maybe targeting people who critique these uh, these films uh, or, or, you know, kind of look down on them. It was interesting. You'll have to see, to see what I mean. But the prostitution of the mind is kind of the typical... Uh, uh, you know, business person. Um, and so you have you have some of these themes kind of running through the film. We also have some outrageous dialogue uh, sections um, with this one kind of um, his his boss, this woman, this blonde haired woman who we hear some narration from a lot from her. Um, there's this outrageous two lines that she says uh, involving uh, this guy having sex with her that are just I, I, you have to see it. It's amazing. Uh, they should be quoted and put in songs. I mean, just amazing. Um, I think it's probably like his dick going so far that it hit her throat or something. I don't know. Desiree Cousteau is also in this movie. Um, so we do have some great cameos of people. I also saw some people I've never seen before. In terms of the sex scenes, they're very, very hot and, and, and erotic because these women are hungering. Or, or they're discovering their hunger for him and for our lead and their hunger and, 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 and their appetites and what the power that he kind of has over them and how this directs his, his manhood and his financial future and so on and so forth. Um, there's some great sex scenes in this film um, just you know throughout. There's a wild lesbian scene uh, with a blonde that I saw in some of Alex Dorenzi's films um, in, on the floor of a kitchen uh, of a restaurant. <laughs> and some interesting tension with a police officer. That was really cool. Um, the movie starts off really funny uh, with a sex scene in a vehicle. It starts off with a very comical vibe. Um, and we have a, a really insane sex scene with a variety of men and one woman um, and on the floor of this red carpeted mansion uh, overlooking water. It is a cra probably the craziest multi-guy with one girl sex scene I've ever seen. Um, really wild sex scenes, uh, big boobs. Yes, there is narration from the lead guy, I'm just remembering. Um, and... Um, you know, kind of beauty and how women can hide their beauty. Um, and then the movie's also a love story with a twist ending. Uh, so Hot Lunch is really all of that. Um, there's some romance in here as well amidst uh, the sex, almost in a pretty woman type of way. Um, yeah, yeah, really. Uh, so this is Hot Lunch from 1978. Um, oh, by the way, the sexual dialogue in this film is wild if you like uh dirty talk you're gonna love it it's it's hot and crazy just like baby rosemary is this a john hayes thing he also likes buttholes they're definitely in this film as well too with some or, i believe some uh, oral anal yeah yeah oral anal definitely in this film um so there's a lot of a lot of uh wild sex scenes in here and dialogue here it is folks 1978 hot lunch there it is thank you so much for watching bye